With the cameras, it is a very unique way to tell a story because there's more than just words when it comes to telling a story. This is KXMC, CBS 13. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. We arrived at the Federal Hotel not quite sure knowing what to expect. That is until President Fidel Castro walked in. The trip down to Cuba was, was absolutely amazing. It was very intimidating as a young reporter to go down to a country at that time that even at this day is still under communist control. I had the opportunity to sit down at a dinner meeting with Fidel Castro. Ironically, the same kind of milkshake the CIA had tried to poison him with 40 years ago. And then you have to throw in the different flights. Today we're going inside the cockpit where you can see oh, I had the thrill ride of a lifetime. Kick the tires and light the fires there, DC. Let's do it. I got an opportunity in 2007 to jump in the uh, jump seat of Thunderbird number no. eight in an F-16 and pull 9.2 Gs. And rolling. That was phenomenal. Could only be described with one word. P-51 Mustang out here at the Dakota Territory Air Museum. Trying to outsmart and outfly the enemy. The Black Hawk helicopters that we flew in during the flood. We've trekked through the Badlands on dinosaur fossil digs and have been at the right place at the right time for a very significant find, a Triceratops horn, uh, a T-Rex tooth. Prospecting for fossils really is a time-sensitive issue, not only to find the dinosaur bones, but to get to them before Mother Nature destroys them. So now it's just a matter of changing from one suit to another. What's another unique facet of North Dakota that you might be able to explore that most people are going to look at you and go, really? You, you'd really do that here? Got some weight to it. We don't just go out and do something. It's typically always a story. I'm sitting in the, the combine going down the field with a camera next to me and a GoPro behind me trying to do everything I can absolutely perfect while trying to run camera equipment and talk and be coherent. An interesting ordeal trying to learn everything there is to know about a combine after not being in one for Oh, I would say about a dozen years. But there's always that fine line where you try not to incorporate too much technology into the story because at the end of the day, it is news. You have to present it as it is. Please search one! Please search one! Down to the ground! Down to the ground now! All the way down! That was kind of loud. Uh, but certain times, uh, for instance, one of my favorite pieces to this day that I've ever edited was the All That You Are video, six month anniversary flood piece. With the good always comes the unfortunate. We do end up covering what we call hard news in this business. Of January 18th, 2002, when this Canadian Pacific train jumped its tracks. Sometimes you do find yourself out in different situations where you can feel your heart racing because you know you're probably in a very tense situation. We can't talk about KX without talking about the flood. We were so connected to each other and to that disaster. Would raise the Cirrus another two to three feet beyond those earlier projections. What I was thinking on the desk at that time, you know, was just basically there's a job to do. And we're, I'll worry about everything else when the time comes and when things settle down a little bit. And this is what I've been waiting weeks to see. This is my house, 920. I will say this, it's something that I really hope no one ever has to go through ever again. Collapsed in the middle of a cold snap. Even now, two years removed, there's still a lot of hurdles and, and things that a lot of us have to overcome, but down the road, if you, if you keep your nose to the grindstone, your head up, 
you're going to come out on the other side. You have to. That's, that's the only choice. The Mouse River crested at 1561.72, a full six feet three inches higher than the old mark from 1969, and that puts our new high water level mark right here. It's kind of really a, a big globe of what it is that you all love to do about your job. So the question a lot of people has asked me is, why am I leaving? <laughs> Sports anchors Mike Elm and Lauren Shahadi nose to nose with a 10 o'clock news team of Melissa Miller and myself, Sean Sitma. It really comes down to I love what I do and I know I can continue doing a piece of that when I do move into a, a new career field, but uh, the biggest piece to me is I love being a part of Minot and I think uh, moving on will give me an opportunity to do maybe enter into some other avenues where I can be more of a part of Minot and spend more time with my family. We've decided in talking with a few people that um, I'm actually going to, uh, I guess, go unshaven for the most part until I'm back in my house. Uh, that's going to be my little, um, my Throwing little, it out. not a full beard, but we'll figure something <laughs> out. But anyway, that when, when you see me clean shaven again, that means I'm backing back into my own home. The irony was, in broadcasting, you're never supposed to have a beard. You're either clean shaven or have a mustache. But I, it was always a reminder to me looking into a mirror or having somebody say something to me about when are you going to finally shave it, it said to me that I still have a lot of work to do. So until that goes away, I've got some unfinished business at home.